I would like uh, to open now the, to the audience the possibility to ask questions to the three speakers that were really raising some interesting issue. So who want to ask the first question? Okay, Paul. I have a question, uh, a remark to uh, Ian, first of all. I would like to thank you for your presentation. I think that it is uh, very important to get this, this view on uh, how we, uh, we need to move forward. And I would like to use your presentation as a benchmark and come back to you fi in five years' time to see how we have we've moved on. Um, Hugo just made a remark to be not too uh, defensive. I'm not I'm not defending anything here, but uh, I, I think that we really should take action on a number of the items that we, uh, that we saw in your presentation. So thank you for that. I have a question uh, for Ian and Chris uh, and Johannes. Uh, in your presentation, Ian, you mentioned that one of the the weekend point is the, is the missing uh, project leadership or project management of Inspire and uh, the difficulty to bring together of this initiative. And that is something that we know very well. We are working since, since several years to keep the three major initiative Inspires, uh, GMS and SAIS aligned. So, you saw uh, from the presentation of Johannes that there is also some development that is happening at national level because there are problems to be addressed and then there are additional systems that are. How you do see, uh, we say, multi-project coordination possibilities because you cannot think that somebody can coordinate everything, so you have different coordination at the level of Inspire, at the level of GMS, at the level of SACE, and as well at the national level how the three speakers see a good model to ensure that there is a cross-project coordination between all these, team, all these initiatives that are running in parallel. Uh, the first thing I should say is that for those of you who sat on one of these panels, it, it's almost impossible to hear what is said. So I'm going to guess, Sandro, <laughs> that you asked me um, how do we see the coordination of multiple projects across multiple areas? Is that right? Sorry about this. I know it sounds as if we're stupid, but we <laughs> genuinely can't hear. Um, the first thing I would acknowledge is that it's, it's a difficult task, a very difficult task. But I, but I actually think that, that there is um, a need for coordination and actually something slightly stronger than coordination. And that the there has to be a single point of responsibility uh, because many of these things are aiming towards a common goal and I'm not going to use the word czar but I actually think that the, the commission could introduce and I can see Hugo shaking his head could introduce a single point of contact about these things where everything there was somebody who took the bigger picture there was somebody who, who was responsible for at least seeing the bigger picture, even if they weren't responsible for dictating how that should be. And I miss that person who has the helicopter view. At, at the agency, I think the last two years, we have a recurrent item with our board, which is defining the link between size, Inspire, GMS, and GEOS. I think we made already three brochures. We made probably more than 10 papers. And still, there is a lot of confusion what exactly the interlinkage is. Um, should there be a one or a centralized coordination or whatever, I would, I'm more and more intending to think about the opposite. I think more and more that it should be an organic grow. And where we should put more the emphasis is on the added value that each of these European initiatives is bringing. 
And that's where I fully align with uh, Ian's presentation, that it's about communication. And if Inspire can clearly demonstrate where its added value is, if where GMES can demonstrate, as well as also size, and there is, there is a specific niche, I think then automatically the user community will pick it up and there probably, I think, there will be no need for a very strong centralized coordination. Well, I would say that, as we have seen, I think in the world generally, the, and in our cooperation, the time for really centralized strong coordination is over. Because we are living in a complex world with many actors. Our situation from the Austin Environment Agency as a member state organization is that we do have our legal task at national and European level and we are trying to fulfill that, them as well as we can and with constantly reduced uh, resources we have to do more. So our only chance is anyway to follow as closely as possible all European initiatives to integrate our concerns as task as well as, as possibly into them. And what I've done in my presentation is also to take up things on which we are working, on which we have to work, and I'm trying to integrate them into the new framework. And from that context, whether we reach some, when we are, whether we are able to do something which we have to do inside Inspire or SICE or SIEF or whatsoever is not a really big difference. But I think on that basis, the and all, I know that all my colleagues from the other national authorities are about in the same situation. So if we cooperate on that basis, we can, we can come to some useful results. I would also encourage that um, Inspire should be more thematized and size and whatsoever, and whatsoever issue some European administrators want to push. It would be good if it's more thematized in institution building capacities in the different projects, twinning projects, your, your external outreach, because when then member state institutions have to work together with other countries on the specific issues, they all learn about it and the practical understanding in implementation is strengthened. So this, we did such initiatives in Croatia and we learned all a lot of it. Thank you. There are other questions from, please. Hello, uh, Ken Raktas. Uh, are you planning to start a project uh, for the international or uh, multinational uh, knowledge sharing platform or uh, knowledge management system using social networks or crowdsourcing? On the knowledge sharing platform, so we have indeed some concrete activities on the agenda. Um, there are two, the one dealing with uh, nature, which is called the Nature Watch, and the second one is dealing with marine litter where we exactly want to make full use of all the potential that such a knowledge sharing platform can offer. That means where you use citizen science, where you use crowdsourcing, where you can have quality assured data together with what the citizens think is thinking about the, the environment. And we link that as well to the policy initiatives. Uh, if I take the example of Nature Watch, there we will have a focus on invasive, invasive alien species. So where, on the one hand, uh, countries will have the obligation to report on invasive species on, the, on a regular basis, and where, on the other hand, we use the knowledge of the citizens, uh, the bird watchers, uh, those specialists in insects, in, in call it whatever, who can as well use the same platform to exchange this information. And the information will be available to all the decision makers as well as the, I would say, the citizen at, at large. Uh, the same for marine litter. So there as well in the context of what will come up of the marine strategy. Um, and we will do that on the basis of the experience we, gazed, we, we gained on, uh, what, on air, water and noise. So where we were testing to what extent you can combine, I would say, the legally reported data together with what you can collect from the individual, from 
uh, I would say the non-expert as well as the what we call the, the citizen who is willing to as well participate in citizen science where we can do as well quality assurance of the data is reporting. So we, we definitely have it on the agenda for the next, uh, well which it's running already for Nature Watch and the marine litter will start next year. Uh, so uh, Hi, my name is Suhai Ulyan. I'm with the United Nations Geographic Information Working Group and also the convener of the United Nations Spatial Data Infrastructure. I have a question for Ian, but before my question, I really would like to congratulate you for a very comprehensive and enlightening assessment of INSPIRE, which as the UN, we will learn quite a bit from. But uh, there seemed to be a statement you made uh, towards the end of your presentation where you talked about um, not so much pondering about a grand design and strategize, but take action and almost experiment and encouraging uh, that type of move. But pri prior to that, you also called for a better coordination and also called for a prioritization, which seems to suggest that there needs to be an expectation of what uh, a long-term vision is. Uh, how do you reconcile the two? Uh, that there seems to be a, 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 a contradiction between those two recommendations. Thank you. I, unfortunately, I did hear that question, uh, and, and I think you're. I think you're right. I think there is a contradiction. Um, and, and when I put the presentation together and looked at it again, and I thought, yeah, I've just contradicted myself. But I still think that you have to try and reconcile those two things. Um, I think it. I think to come back to something Johanna said uh, in answer to uh, uh, Zandro's first question, please don't confuse leadership with dictatorship and centralization. People can be led without being centralized. And what I talked about was lack of leadership. And I would reinforce that what, what um, Chris said. I think much of this is a leadership is about good communication and I think um, there needs to be good communication. So my answer to the contradiction, and I think it is more than apparent, I think there is, um, in multinational ventures such as those of Inspire and Size and, and certainly the global ones with the UN, the, the need for strong leadership, which is not dictatorship, is, is even more paramount. And the need for excellent communication grows with it. So they may appear to be contradictory, but I'm not sure they really are. They're just something that has to be managed very, very well. Uh, I have a question to DG JRC people about the lack of funding in putting uh, Inspire in action. Um, apart the strong connections you have with Environmental European Agency, DG, uh, Connect, did you make any, uh, any already any, any action, for instance, to the, the directoral, um, Directorate General for the cohesion policy at the regional level, for instance, for the planning of the uh, use of structural funds across the regions in Europe, because in the programs, um, uh, allowing to spend a lot of money, there are a lot of actions for tangible and physical infrastructures and probably some recommendation to focus on um, these kind of infrastructures like SDIs could be useful probably. Thank you. I'm not the speaker in this session, so <laughs> I, I don't want to not answer your question. So. We are thinking about the creation of Inspire Bond, but uh, <laughs> that is um, clearly uh, this issue has been raised several times, how Inspire is funded and was also raised by Ian in his presentation. So we know that we don't have specific funds from Inspire, but we are since the beginning trying to convince our colleague to finance Inspire related activities, in particular an eContent Plus project. And one of the instruments is clearly the structural funds. In the structural funds, you will have the possibility to finance ICT infrastructures, but for specific domain. 
It's not something generic like AE, Environment Information Infrastructure. This was not possible. We, we push uh, our colleague uh, to, in, to include also generic e, e, environmental services. It was not possible, but you still have information infrastructure for disaster management, for example, that you can use uh, to build inspired component and tools. Because in, 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 dealing, uh, in building an information infrastructure for disaster management, you can justify investment in most of the envir environmental data teams. So you, do, you don't have so far, we have not convinced so far on uh, funding generic e government services. We are still discussing because it's a part of uh, the digital agenda for Europe and together with the agency we are pushing our colleague to consider more and more. But if you look to the today priorities more on e-health services than on e-environmental services because in terms of citizen it's more appealing to finance health services than environmental services in today's days. So, but if, if I can answer some of the provocative questions of Ian, we try to do our best to align all the things. And for example, I think one of the best uh, recognition of Inspire is in the communication that was issued last year on toward interoperability of public services in which INSPIRE is recognized as a precursor of the digital agenda for Europe as far as concerning interoperability. And this is officially recognized as environmental uh, sector initiative. What we are trying now to convince our colleagues is to move from the, 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 the notion of environmental sector to a location-based sector initiative, so to expand to other policies. And this is something that is going on, but it takes some time to align all these type of things. And we don't succeed always, we try to, we, tr we do our best. I think that we need now to close the, the section because uh, you, otherwise your coffee will be not hot enough <laughs> and we have also to take the time for the next session. Thank you very much. Uh, please uh, congratulate to all the speakers again.